paper towel. Oh, hey, hi, I'm Captain Eddie Castellan. Welcome to my shop. I'm in here fooling around a little bit. I got a prescription. The doctor says go out and shop, have fun. How can you go out and shop and not have fun? Uh, that's doctor talk. Okay, now, I did something the other day, number 309, was about turning rings on a, a jewelry. And when I got to looking at it, I realized, oh, I had some holidays in there I should have told you about. So I'm going to go over a couple of things, four or five things, and uh, some other items. All you got to do is watch. Oh, I'm sorry. I was told by a guy in the far west, you got to say, watch this. See, see, that work better than it. When we were doing the, the ring out of epoxy I got from um, Harbor Freight. No, I'm sorry. Crab Supplies. Brains fried today. I told you I wanted to polish it, but I didn't have the polish. And I get a lot of calls and questions about things. I mean, it hit, it's Friday the 13th. What's that? Trixodixophobia or something like that? All you guys call all you gals. All you folks called me today with different things. I loved it. We talked all afternoon. In fact, that which kept me out of the shop. But we talk about things, and guys said, "What do you do about polishing?" You didn't explain this, this to use a beel. No, I don't. If I'm going to do a piece of epoxy or corian or other acrylics, I'm going to use this. When you see it, I'm going to it away where you can see it with the light. This is made for cars. I found it at AutoZone. Magyar's Plast X. It's a clear plastic cleaner and polish. And it works great for polishing these these pieces. Why? Because it's got a light abrasive to it, a very light abrasive. And I put a little bit on a scrap of paper towel. I use blue paper towel, remember my rule, rags never come to the thing unless I'm wearing them. But I put it on a, with a cloth, then I polish it in. And it'll generate a little bit of heat, not much. It doesn't get that hot because it's not a heavy abrasive. But it's a mild abrasive, and it will polish out the little fines. When I'm talking about making things look better when you see them, it's, how can I put this in layman's terms uh, and, and explain it? All right, if you look at something, you're looking at the reflection of the light from what you're looking at. It's just how it goes. Light goes in and light comes back. It goes in and what I believe is blue comes back blue. What you believe is blue comes back red. What you believe is green comes back orange. Whatever. It's in there. All right? And I learned a lot about what ain't in there. So, but when you want to get a fantastic shine or something, or the chatoyance, the natural beauty of the wood to come out, for the light to go in and for the light to come out, it's pretty simple. You have to have the scratches going. So if I sanded this with a brick or 80 grit, piece of paper and then stepped up to 220 because it looked pretty good. I left a lot of scratches from the 80 to the 220. There's this area in there that I did not knock down. It's still in there. It's ridges. It's like if you took a, 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 a rake and tried to level out the, the, the desert. There'd be ridges where your feet marks are. Right? Okay. The deal when you want to get a good shine is get rid of the scratches. So I sanded all the way up to 1200 grit with Vince Welch's sandpaper. Then I put it up back on, then I put it on this and I buffed it. And if I didn't have the right buffing compound, so I couldn't do it the right way, I just put it on there and I buffed it with something I had around the shop. Um, and I just remembered who I gave the other bottle of of shine juice too, not shine juice, uh, polish. Uh, 
because it essentially, the four years I was sick, it dried up. But the difference in that to this is night and day. That, oh well, back up. That has got an awesome shine to it now. Hot why? Because with that plastics, the real fine abrasive, I removed a few more scratches. So the light that goes in can come out and didn't get bounced around. And that's that's a key part when you do this, is to get the light in and out. And it's in wood, plastics, whatever you finish. The better you get it sanded, the better you get it conditioned, the better it will look. And I had a guy from, he says he's in the western United States. There's 2,000 miles of ocean between us and him. I think that's a little bit further west. But he told me today that when we talk about some of this stuff, we sometimes get a little complicated. We need to bring it back to basics. So we're bringing it back to basics. You get the you get the scratches out, you get the color out. I got a few other things, but I love this plastics. You don't have to go to don't have to go down to the wood turning store and give them an arm and a leg to get it. That's just the beauty of it. All right now, um, we talked. I talked the other day about mounting with sure tape, double stick tape, and I joked about it. Don't go ask for double stick duct tape. It's it's just what it is. I mean, it's just like that. But look at something here. Do you see those ridges coming up on that tape? Right. What has happened is the cardboard roll in there is, is modified a little bit and has caused the tape to move. And what I didn't know at the time was I was using the back end of a roll of tape that is now in a trash can. Because this was, it was seven years old, according to the stamp on it, it wore out. It just outlived its existence or its usefulness. So I got some brand new rolls. And they worked a whole lot better. So what I did the other the other day was I took a face plate on my one-way chuck and I faced it off and then I treated it with super glue to make it more to seal it. That's what I did. I actually sealed it with super glue. One or two coats on it. When I glued the block of wood on it with the double stick tape, it's going to stick better to the wood because the one I had to gave up, gave up off the wood, not off the the, the epoxy, and it'll it'll hold on a little bit better. Now, two things: I need to face this off with a scraper and get it good and smooth before I put the sealer on it, and then I got to clean it after I use it with something that won't dissolve the tape on the next use. So that's the beauty when you have your stuff rigged up in chucks. And a guy called me today from North Carolina about buying a chuck. And he asked me my opinion on a couple of different brands. And I went right to him and said, straight up, this is a one-way stronghold. I've had it on a mini jet. I've had it on um, a Delta. I've had it on a Vic Mark. I've had it on a Woodfast. Now it's on a stronghold, on, on a one-way. It's a one-way stronghold chuck. That adapter in the back, that part back here, that's not the adapter, that's the ring as part of the chuck for putting it onto the piece. If you have to put a spacer on to get from the chuck out to a to a to a thread, you've added one more link in that chain and it could flex. Don't tell me all the science on it. I'm telling you to flex. But what I love about this lake, or about this chuck. One big C lock, C lock ring down in there. I can pull this ring out, pop that ring off, and take all these parts out of this thing, clean it with mineral spirits, put it back together, and it's like it's brand new. And I had one sit in the rain for a couple of years. I was away. Um, it's like brand new. It is. It just took about an hour to clean it, get it shaped up before you pay for it. I got my money's worth out of that. Really did. Um, and I told you about the drilling. 
when I was drilling these taps, these blocks to put the rings in, that I'm waiting ready to fan up the drilling, I changed my mind on that. When I thought about the block, the little square block that's being held, and I know I got another one, talk about the block being held on the faceplate and then using a scraping tool or whatever to cut it on. I want as much, and now I do, I want as much surface area as I can possibly get to hold that block in place until I get that center cord out and done. So leaving the block square would make sense then. And then you just got to grow a few smarts for when you trim it off so you don't knock it off there. There's a couple of things. Um, the size. I did tell you that they, I did find more, more sizes and stuff and, and narrow ones. Nice. Um, oh, someplace around here in the shop, I brought back from SWAT about two years ago. SWAT. You know what SWAT is, right? Southwest Association of Turners. S-W-A-T-U-R-N-E-R-S dot org. You got to see this address to understand it. Go here. It's the world's finest, my opinion, world's finest wood turning symposium. It is in Waco, Texas, the last full weekend of August. And it is awesome. It's like a family meeting with a family you like. All kinds of people you'll meet. I'll be there. I'll be giving stuff away. Yeah. Uh, but I brought these bracelets back that you turn in epoxy or Corian or wood ring. And then you put these snaps on them and you put this thing together and makes bracelets. They're here. They're out here. In the shop. Somewhere. I want to find... And it's a little bitty box. But the... Uh, no, it ain't the box. I want to find that box when we do some bracelets. I'm going to get so many sweetheart points out of this. Jewelry. Bracelets. Doodads. Thingly bobs for quilting and stuff. I'm locked in. I can buy what I want when we go to SWAT. I can't. Oh, and I got to tell you again, guess what time it is? It's time for photographs. Yep. You hear the bell? Take a look. Right up on top, this is from Mike Mathern. It's an urn he did. Nice segment of piece. He dyed it and then he sanded it and he dyed it again. This is the lid. His brother did this lid. Boy, I tell you what, don't get rid of that brother. He That's some beautiful work. Then Steve Tibbetts had this. Um, this is a simple bowl. Not simple, but very nicely done. Um, and then I get this from Alan Bidua. I think that's his name. He said, if it's worthy, put it up. Look at that line. Wow. It's only a few photos. That's all I got in the last day or so. Computer charging cord got kinked and died but the computer died the Mac shop nearby took a look at it no oh, no you need a new chair now it's back so we're all right but when all that was going on I didn't get one of the videos out now I get I gotta get this one put together and I want to get back out and start turning some other little projects for you and the goal is to turn these projects and share ideas pardon me and the ideas are coming from from what you guys see, and what you guys do, and what you send us. So you see those photographs? Some of that work is absolutely awesome. It's by the best woods turners in the world. Right there. When you go to the bathroom in the morning, you look in the mirror, the best wood turner in the world is looking back, right back at you. That is unless Alice is on the shoulder, you know, saying, get out of the way. But, if, you, if you've got photographs of your work, send them to the address that showed up. When the pictures were there, CaptainEddieCastle at gmail.com. Nowhere else. Nowhere else. Hey, I thought I was done and gone, but I'm not. I gotta remind you this is brought to you by Big Guy Productions. www.eddiecastlin.com. That's where we sell cutters, carbide bar, carbide cutters. Bars, templates, rigs, longworth chuck parts. It's a big, big run on the longworth. Everybody wants to build the longworth right now. It's a smart move. I've got several. I've got them from oh, to fit on an ornamental machine for small. And I got them up to big, fit on here, and, and all kinds of ver ver versions of them. 
Why? Because it holds flip-flops. Uh, flip-flops. It's not a good term to use. It holds a bowl or a jar or a vase or a ring or a bracelet or a piece. It'll hold it in rubber nubs so you can finish the bottom off or finish off the edge. It's really nifty. Nifty thing. I have the instructions on my website. We sell the parts for it if you need the parts. Just seems like these things run in, in, in stages. Now they go. That and the sander bearings. Whew. Had a guy come yesterday. He's traveled all the way from Lowatanda, Lowatanda, Lowanatanda, New York. Came down to visit. Well, he was in town for something else. But he came down to visit. And the bearings were one of the items on his list. So, that's it. Look, I gotta get out of here. I, there's a club meeting tomorrow. I got some things I gotta put together. I gotta get these other rings out. I got some things to do. I gotta put this on the air. Uh, uh, I gotta get back and start making shavings. So, I'm Captain Eddie Castle. If you wanna call, call the number. You got a problem, a situation, you want to brag, whatever, give me a call, I'll be there. You take care now. I wish I had my checklist, and then I could check and see if I have anything on the checklist. Ain't got that.